Media mogul Rupert Murdoch faces a deposition in the British Parliament on July the 19th, 2011. I would just like to say one sentence. This is the most humble day of my life. The 168-year-old British tabloid News of the World, once owned by him and recently closed, has been caught hacking into telephone lines for gathering information. I was appalled to find out what had happened. Will you have quiet and I apologize. The Indian news media picked up the story. Every news channel went out of its way to showcase the criminal depths to which journalistic ethics had fallen. The world's most powerful media mogul is being interrogated literally in the gaze of the entire universe. Is this the hubris of one man? Is it a larger issue on media ethics? For anyone interested in the business and ethics of news, this has been a remarkable week. A scandal that has left the United Kingdom shaken at the way its national media works. And if you ask me, Rajdeep, Rubot Murdoch was lying through his teeth. This spurt of enthusiasm by the Indian media for the unacceptable behavior of some British journalists was curious, especially when considered in the light of its own credibility, which has been questionable for some time. It's raised fundamental questions that go to the core of journalism as well as media ownership. April the 1st, 2010, it's Judgment Day. A report is awaited. And the stakes are high. On one side is the Indian press, targeted for corruption. Editors in respectable houses have now become fixers. It is alleged that both the print and electronic media are neck deep into the business of paid news. Temptations are greater, money is greater. Seductions are greater. Paid advertisements are published and broadcast in the guise of news. Every single aspect of news uh, we think is up for sale. On the other side is a two-member committee set up by the Press Council of India. The committee has investigated all the allegations and is ready with its report. The fourth pillar of Indian democracy is on tender hooks. The fourth pillar of democracy should not become the fifth column of democracy. This film explores the murky underworld of paid news. There is corruption by omission. Of journalism where money speaks. A sports page looks like, like say a stardust page. We find out how and when the business of news replaced news. They make money uh, to make you. They make money by breaking you. We investigate the dark secrets behind what's termed breaking news. Media is a circus. In April 2011, four states and one union territory elected their governments. A vast polling exercise involving over 150 million voters. The Election Commission of India had to issue more than 200 notices to politicians and their parties for planting campaigns in the garb of news. In October 2010, there were assembly elections in Bihar, the third most populous state in India. More than 100 notices were issued by the election commission to paid news offenders. Most of them admitted that it was paid news and decided to uh, account for it in this statement. But we feel that is not the end of the matter because it is not just a question of accounting for uh, the expenses, but there is also an element of deception. In October 2009, Maharashtra went to the polls. Politicians were living on the edge. Positive media coverage was vital. 
the stakes were extremely high. A media house had a business proposal. Up for sale was new space. 20 lakh rupees or 40,000 US dollars for 15 days of general coverage. 15 lakh rupees or 30,000 US dollars for 10 days. For exclusive coverage, the rates were higher. 25 lakhs or 50,000 US dollars for 7 days. 22 lakhs or 44,000 US dollars for 4 days. And for a fixed price, exclusive interviews were assured. There was also a flexi pay offer. 50% cash and the rest by cheque or 100% in cash. If this sounds like fiction, look at the bare facts. Ashok Chavan wants to be re-elected and wants to continue as chief minister. 72 hours before polling began, Two news articles appeared in two rival dailies of Maharashtra, Lokmat and Maharashtra Times. The articles in both newspapers were identical and both paid glowing tributes to Ashok Chavan. Three days before, the same article had appeared in another Marathi paper, Pudhari. The same article with three different bylines. Was it a case of three minds thinking alike? When, in April 2009, the Assembly and Lok Sabha elections were held simultaneously, P.K. Ramarao, a candidate from the Lok Satta Party, was promised positive media coverage in lieu of payment. I gave the money to the sales, uh, to the advertising uh, agent of Inadu on 9th April, about 50,000 rupees I gave in cash. He did not give any acknowledgement or any receipt. He wanted the money to be paid in cash only. P.K. Ramarao took care to include the sum he paid as part of his election expenses in a declaration now mandatory according to Election Commission rules. After the money was paid and then after the management was satisfied, after I struck a deal with the newspaper, then uh, you know, my coverage uh, uh, got uh, improved. Almost uh, I got a half page coverage and then I was uh, uh, interviewed. See, all this is uh, self-evident. It is self-explanatory. The case was taken to the Andhra High Court, where it is still pending. As a newspaper or a channel, especially in the inter-interior areas, or fossil areas, are identified with a political party or a particular candidate, now that paper or that channel will then star, start airing all kinds of accusations against their rivals. And then the paper of the channel goes to the rivals and says, look, this is what this guy is saying about you. He's saying you're this, you're that. Now what do you do? So he, they, they say, well, if you want space on our channel, this is how much it will cost you. Congress is ready to create history in Bihar screamed a banner headline in the Patna edition of Hindustan in April 2009, when the first phase of polling began in Bihar. There was no news item related to the headline, far less an explanation of how Congress intended to create history in Bihar. The whistle was blown when some papers made more money and some made less. So those who made less money then started whispering among themselves about how some others were making a lot of money. And then, of course, the English media picked on it and made it an exclusively vernacular issue, which is also not correct. Vernaculars have the largest reach and therefore they were very visible. 
but major English language dailies have been smoking a peace pipe with corporates and with also with major political parties for a long time. Take the case of MediaNet, a Times of India initiative that began at the turn of the millennium. First, you want to cover celebrities, then celebrities want to be covered and like being covered. Then they're told, okay, you like being covered, now pay to be covered. I mean, that's what the Times group did. They said, you know, why are we carrying so much PR stuff? Let's get them to pay for it. And that's how you had this company called MediaNet that was created. What started with page three has now spread to other pages. The regional media has followed the trend set by the national media. Forward-looking politicians are taking it to the next level. They are no longer interested in buying media, they much prefer ownership. Down south, everyone worth their political salt owns a TV channel. Karuna Nidhi's nephew, Kalanidhi Maran, owns Sun TV. Karuna Nidhi's family also owns Kalanyar TV. AIDMK Supremo Jaya Lalita runs Jaya TV. Actor turned politician Vijay Kant runs Captain TV. Congress leaders run Megha TV and Basantha TV. PMK runs Makkal TV. Sakshi TV and the Sakshi newspaper belong to Jagan Reddy. Telugu Desham Supremo Chandra Babu's son is the CEO of Studio N Channel. The Inadu Group allegedly has loyalties towards the Telugu Desham. Telangana Rashtra Samiti has launched its own TV channel, T News. HD Kumaraswamy has his own TV channel, Kasturi. The Reddy brothers of Bellary fame have their own channel, Jan Shri. CPIM-backed Malayalam Communications runs three TV channels. Congress has Jai Hind Television. MK Munir of the Muslim League runs India Vision TV. If you go to Nagaland, the chief minister is associated with the newspaper. Uh, if you go to the northeast, uh, there's a channel called News Live, which is owned by a political family in Assam. So there are more and more examples. In Odessa, a lot of newspapers have political affiliations. 1999, Manu Sharma, son of a billionaire politician, shot Jessica Lal because she refused him a drink. We want justice! 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 After years of a long trial, Manu Sharma was sentenced to life imprisonment. In 2008, the Sharma family launched media companies. There are other reasons for getting into the media without being wanting to be in the media. And those reasons, which are that people want political power, they think that if you have media, you can persuade politicians, you can blackmail people, etc., etc. All the wrong reasons. India News was a weekly launched by the Sharmas. Sudhir Saxena edited India News. In less than three years, the publication became popular in Jharkhand, Bihar and Eastern UP. But the weekly's popularity wasn't enough. प्रबंधन की ओर से लगातार यह दबाव बनाया गया कि मैं पत्रिका को ब्रेक इवन में लाने के लिए विज्ञापनों के रूप में मैनेजमेंट को सहयोग दूं और बाद में तो बहुत स्पष्ट रूप से कहा गया कि आप प्रति माह लगभग पांच लाख रुपए के विज्ञापन लाके मुझे दें ताकि पत्रिका ब्रेक इवन में आए अन्यथा पत्रिका को बंद किया जा सकता है सुधीर सक्सेना वॉज नॉट प्रिपेयर टू प्ले बोल एक संपादक का विज्ञापन प्रभारी या विज्ञापन के प्रतिनिधि के तौर पर अवमूल्यन मुझे कतई स्वीकार नहीं था इसीलिए अंततः मैंने बाध्य होकर 30 मार्च सन 2010 को वहां के वहां से इस्तीफा दिया एडिटर सच ए सुधीर सक्सेना विलिंग टू स्टैंड अप टू द मैनेजमेंट और एन ओनर इज अ स्पीशीज फास्ट ऑन इट्स वे टू एक्सटिंक्शन 
you control the editor and you virtually control the paper. And so I keep hearing from younger people how editors in respectable houses have now become fixers in that they actually travel location to location, meet up with the local government officials and solicit Department of Audiovisual Publicity, DAVP advertising and make sure that it is in substantial amounts and three quarters of their work when they are not working as editors goes in chasing these and in this the stringers are great help to them. Then the MLA's champu comes in, to, comes in handy. फिर वो एमएलए साहब से कहेगा कि सर जी ये अपने संपादक जी आपसे मिलना चाहते हैं दो मिनट के लिए इनको चाय पिला दीजिएगा सम इनबॉक्स संपादक जी एमएलए विल से कि ये लड़का कह रहा था कि आपके यहाँ सब एडिटर की जगह खाली हो रही हैं क्या इसका कुछ हो सकता हाँ जी जरूर देख लेंगे वो जरा सा डीएवीपी एड की बात थी हाँ हाँ सर जी हम देख लेंगे कुरुक्षेत्र इन नॉर्थ इंडिया इज वे दिक बैटल ऑफ द महाभारत वॉज फोर्ट Here we met Rakesh Sharma, who has taken up arms against all the powerful news media. हम पैसा देकर लेकर खबर छापते ही नहीं हम पैसा लेकर खबर रोकते भी हैं. From 2002 to 2010, Rakesh was a correspondent with India's leading vernacular daily, Dainik Jagran. During his stint with this paper, Rakesh covered two parliamentary and two assembly elections. Like most journalists today, especially those in the more remote parts of India, Rakesh's job was not restricted to merely being a reporter. पैदा हमें ये टारगेट दिया गया था कि आपको इतने पैसे का चुनावी समाचार लेके आना है। चाहे वो आप विज्ञापन के समझ उसमें लेके आएं, या चाहे आप उसका समाचार छापिए, कि आपको इतने पैसे का अरेंज करना है। मेन वाइली ये कि जो हम हमें सैलरी दी जा रही है उसका दस गुना तो हमें वापस संस्थान को करना ही करना है तब भी तो हम नौकरी कर पाएंगे अदरवाइज बहुत मुश्किल है सरवाइव करना बहुत लंबी लाइन है राकेश हैड नो ऑप्शन बट टू फॉलो द मैनेजमेंट्स डिक्टेट इलेक्शन का दौर चल पड़ा नामांकन हो गया तो हम लोगों ने उनके खिलाफ बिल्कुल छांट छांट कर ऐसी ऐसी खबरें लिखी कि जिससे उनको डायरेक्ट डैमेज हो तो किया उनको ब्लैकमेल किया मैनेजमेंट की तरफ से तो दबाव यही था कि आप पैसा इकट्ठा कीजिए जो नहीं देता उसका कान मरोड़े जो जितना भी निचोड़ सके आप किसी भी शाम दाम दंड भेद की नीति से जितना भी आप निचोड़ लें आप निचोड़ लें कोई उसमें पैकेज नहीं चले कि जिसने जो दे दिया लास्ट में तो जब इलेक्शन में पांच सात दिन वो रह गए कि यार ये तो मामला कुछ नहीं बन पा रहा है तो तब तो ये था कि यार जो आए जितना देता है दे दो पैसा इकट्ठा हुआ कंपनी के अकाउंट में नहीं गया मालिक उसको भी घर ले गए ये शेयर होल्डर्स के साथ सबसे बड़ी बेईमानी थी डीपली डिस्टर्ब राकेश रिजाइंड इन 2010 एंड बिगैन टू गैदर एविडेंस अगेंस्ट हिज फॉर्मर एम्प्लॉयर लोगों के विज्ञापन गए आठ बाय आठ के इन साइड पेज मतलब वो खबरें थी खबरें थी मैं इवन आपको फाइल नंबर बता देता हूँ सेवन आई मेरे लॉग इन से सेवन आई फाइल थी फाइव सी फाइल थी ऐसे ही बाईस तारीख को ये थ्री बी फाइल सेवन आई फाइल सतारह बाय आठ बैक पेज उन्नीस हजार एक सौ छिहत्तर और ये दूसरे पार्टी का ना पॉलिटिशन का तो क्या मैं क्या नाम लूँ ये बेचारे ये तो खुद ब्लैकमेल हो रहे थे सेवन आई फाइल गई है एट बाई एट में बैक पेज में छपा है इससे ज़्यादा चुनाव आयोग को आप मैं कहता हूँ मैं आपको ये डिटेल दे रहा हूँ चुनाव आयोग को ये डिटेल दे रहा हूँ प्रेस काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया को ये डिटेल दे रहा हूँ मैं अपनी तरफ से पेपर प्रोड्यूस नहीं करता मेरे पास हैं मैं वो पेपर निकलवा दूँगा आप अखबार के मालिकों से मांगिए ना कि आप इस तारीख के पेपर ला के दिए इस आप उनसे पता करें कि इन पार्टियों का विज्ञापन छपा है ये पेड न्यूज छपी है या नहीं छपी दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ वन एडिशन दैनिक जागरण हैज 37 सेवन एडिशन स्प्रेड अक्रॉस इलेवन स्टेट इन इंडिया कहना नहीं चाहूंगा ऐसे ऐसे लोग देखे हैं कि मालिक को देख के जब वो पैसे की और इसकी बात होती थी उन लोगों का इतना 
कहते हुए भी मुझे अच्छा नहीं लग रहा कि क्या कहूँ उन लोगों का क्या हालात होती थी उनकी कि उनके उनसे अच्छा तो कि सला एक गली में बैठे हुए आप अपने घर के सामने बैठे हुए कुत्ते को लात मारोगे वो खूं करके आपको भोंकेगा तो उनको तो जितनी मर्जी लाते मार लो भोंकने वाले क्या बोलने वाले भी नहीं है ये लोग सिर्फ तकमा लगा रखा है बने हम एडिटर हैं हम ये है Rakesh has written to the President of India, the Election Commission, the Press Council, and to the Securities and Exchange Board of India on the practice of paid news in Dainik Jagra. In July 2010, he uploaded on the internet some of the evidence against Dainik Jagra. No response from any quarter yet, but Rakesh continues to fight his personal Mahabharat. against his own kith and kin meri ladai sirf ek dainik jagran ke liye nahi hai ye ek vyavastha ka ek system jo ban gaya uske khilaf ladai hai ab dainik jagran ko to aap isliye mere nazariye se to dainik jagran isliye isme wo aage kyunki mere paas document hi dainik jagran ke iske ilawa dusre akhbar hain mujhe naam lene mein koi hech nahi hai bhaskar hai usne bhi aise hi chhapa hai punjab kesari ne chhapa hai hindustan ne chhapa hai If politics and media can scratch each other's backs, can corporate India be far behind? Bennett Coleman and Company, or BCCL, publishers of the Times of India and the Economic Times, has facilitated the process by setting up Times Private Treaties that has now been renamed Brand Capital. The deal is that the Times Group will give newspapers space in lieu of equity shares. Today their portfolio includes over 300 companies. No wonder Brand Capital is a business model that has lured a large number of other media houses. In a clear case of conflict of interest, newspapers and TV channels have become partners in companies they're supposed to report on. For instance, the Anil Ambani group that promotes Reliance Capital has investments in Network 18 that operates CNN IBN, IBN 7 and CNBC TV 18. The TV Today group which operates Aajtak and Headlines Today. UTV Bloomberg, the business news channel. The Anil Ambani group also runs a mutual fund called the Media and Entertainment Fund. Its top 10 holdings include the Sun TV network, Jagran Prakashan and HD Media or Hindustan Times Media. The role of corporate houses and and their their ability to control the media needs to be looked at very seriously. Uh yes, if a media if a corporate house has a very large stake in a media company, naturally the corporate house is uh, is not necessarily doing it for journalistic purposes. and will thereby ex- exert certain control over the media house you know there's so many multiple ways in which today business is negotiating and in bed with media houses as in media ownership and i don't think there is any independence anymore every story is evaluated by whether a it hurts our business interest first or it then second whether it hurts any of our big advertisers The stock market represents the aspirations of a growing economy. No wonder every news platform offers stock specific programs. The bonus comes in the form of free advice to the investor. Welcome to Tea Street ka dawn dosto. Sit back and enjoy. Your money. Stock 2020. हमें है आपके पैसों का ख्याल. Let me give you a couple of names that you should look at. Large cap fund. She said 60%. Please look at DSP BlackRock Top 100. You can also look at Franklin India Blue Chip Kotak 30 and IDFC Imperial Equity Plan. Raj की company एक बहुत ही उम्दा bet है. Take this advice at your own risk, says the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. आज फिर कहता हूँ. जमशेदपुर में रह के you must buy Tata Steel. 
In July 2010, the ministry published a guide to the capital market. It cautioned investors to beware of the media, especially the stock-specific advice given on the electronic media. It warned that in reality, many of these advisors have vested interests. It warned people not to get carried away with news reports about the financial performance of companies. Yet companies use every trick in the trade to sustain high share values in order to retain their worth in the capital market. And the media appears to be more than happy to be a willing partner. On June the 18th, 2010, Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Industries was holding its AGM. The media was abuzz with speculation that his estranged brother, Anil, might attend the AGM and broker a reconciliation. The speculation turned out to be no more than speculation. Anil Ambani did not attend. Where did it come from? And why did it spread like wildfire? You think it was a... I don't think he had any intention of attending it. And I think it just was done to push up share prices. Did everyone fall for it? Do we not verify? Or was someone, you know, saying, uh, confirming it to them privately? I don't know. But isn't it something that someone needs to analyze very seriously? As a matter of fact, Anil Ambani's Reliance Communications has been the subject of the most extraordinary merger speculations in the media. It began with rumours that the South African telecom giant, MTN, were ready to talk to Arcon. MTN officially denied this on June the 3rd, 2010. By then, someone had already started fresh rumours that now AT&T was keen on Arcom and that talks had already begun. AT&T denied this on June the 7th, 2010. Up next was the Abu Dhabi-based Etisalat. Etisalat clarified that it was considering several options, Arcom being only one of them. When one of the largest economic newspapers for three days in a row talks about one of these Ambani companies tying up with three global telecom majors, all of whom issue denials, I think there has to be an investigation into where did they get their stories from? And isn't there a pattern in this? Very evidently there is. Question is, okay, I write about it, but do we have a system where it is going to be investigated? No. Business journalism versus political journalism. The debate is not about which is corrupt and which is honest. Rather, the debate revolves around the subject of which is the more corrupt. It is hardly a secret to say that business journalism is perhaps the most corrupt part of Indian journalism. There is far less corruption in business journalism than there is in political journalism. <laughs> there is so much more money riding on business journalism. The political journalists, because of their closeness to the chief minister and the prime minister are getting a house in Bombay out of the chief minister's quota and all of them very easily used to do it. Only they got the houses, right? And how many of them? What is the value? Why doesn't anyone talk about it? When I was the uh, Editors Guild president, we had formulated a code for business journalists alone. Uh, but that is flouted. But I think there is much more awareness uh, that business journalists are much more vulnerable to these kind of bribes, etc., because the stakes so are much higher. I started as a business journalist where, you know, those days it was clocks and casseroles and, you know, tea sets that were being given out to journalists. And there were these embarrassing things about senior people who are, you know, your editors tucking three of them under their arm and getting out of three press conferences, all held in the Taj. The temptations and the seductions that are offered to journalists have magnified tenfold because the stakes have become much bigger. So the bribing of journalists, as it were, was done on a somewhat smaller scale before because the stakes were not so high. How many people have gone to the Rajya Sabha? Are they business journalists? Count them. They're not. They're political journalists. And when they become editors, their entire focus is to get, you know, whether it is the awards or then land up in a parliament. How many of them have become full-time politicians? They were all journalists, 
So were they ever fair? Uh, how did they build up this rapport? Unless they were so close and projecting a certain ideology or whatever, they wouldn't have been absorbed at the senior most levels in political parties. When journalists have ambitions that go beyond journalism, when they have political ambitions, uh, when they want to become members of parliament, uh, or uh, when, they, uh, when they want to be power brokers, that worries me. And that's, that, that in a sense uh, uh, reduces the credibility of this profession even further. Big money rides on films. Big money calls for big publicity. The media is in no mood to let go of this opportunity. Today, a film can bomb. But if you have deep pockets, you can buy space in the leading newspapers, go to the television networks and give a perception that it has worked. I'm not really sure anybody is that bothered with ethics anymore. Creating a noise, buying reviewers. Who are, today the reviewer's credibility is at an all-time low. What lofty ideals can there be about reviewing Bollywood films? Absolutely none. I don't believe in the kind of reviews they're doing. It's raining stars all over the reviews. There are evidences of reviewers selling themselves and giving you the rating that you choose to get. And those ratings are flashed on the... On, on the hoardings and flash in the newspapers as evidence of the product being first rate. The buzz begins before the film is released, as if on cue. Controversies spring out of nowhere. Karan Johar, director Renzel De Silva, actors Karina Kapoor and Saif Ali Khan. Karan Johar ki ek aur film par hangama shuru ho gaya hai. Film stars make appearances over primetime news. Kurban, a film set against a theme that perhaps we don't talk about often enough, terrorism and the Muslim identity. Issues related to the film are discussed by credible news anchors in all seriousness. You f were finding it hard to defend that behind every detonator there was a Muslim. That's right. Everything is a deal. Money has been exchanged. Today, uh, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Just before the release of the film, Three Idiots, Vidhu Vinod Chopra had a much publicized breaking news spat over credits with writer Chetan Bhagat. No, no, I'm asking you, okay, okay. the book. No, you have not read the book. No, you have to shut up. <laughs> Amir Khan travelled incognito across the nation. With TV cameras in tow. Now I am on the road. That's film journalism for you. I don't think anybody respects it. Uh, if it was ever respected, it was always seen as a kind of a pretty shallow. Um, offshoot of mainstream journalism. We don't have the guts and the audacity to question these people who are peddling lies under the name of truth. Welcome back to the news with me, Amitabh Bachchan. But I'm playing the guest editor today at CNN and IBM. To promote his film, Rana, Amitabh Bachchan becomes a guest editor of CNN and IBM. We are very influenced by, uh, by the media. It is... Uh, in our face every day. What's wrong? There's absolutely nothing wrong. It's a fantastic game! If CNN IBN trades its editor for television ratings, how can Times Now be left behind? Our team became number one in test cricket. And then comes Star News. And so the circus continues. Amit Ji, I'm taking a virtual set. This set... कंप्यूटर की मदद से बनाया जाता है और आपको यहां पर सिर्फ ग्रीन दिखाई देगा लेकिन 
जब आप देखेंगे तो इसको सेट पे तो इसमें आपका रन का वो सेट नजर आ जाएगा जिसको हमने एक ग्राफिक्स रूम के अंदर देखा हुआ था देखिए अब आई पी एल पे टीवी स्क्रीन The TV screen is there. It's absolutely superb. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. There has been a dramatic shift, certainly in the in the content of of news. Uh, there is a greater tendency towards what you call infotainment today. If everybody is going to be in the entertainment business, who is going to be giving us news? Because giving news is a very important social function. Dhoni from Jharkhand. Hey. Mind it, all you fast bowler rascals. I have the bat, do you have the ball? Cricket, the poster boy of a not so sports crazy nation, and cricketers top the charts in brand image building. So, negative reporting on cricketers with high advertising visibility becomes a tricky proposition. I have known of instances where big corporates have threatened to withdraw ads from, say, television channels or from newspapers, saying that you have done an adverse reporting of us, or you are not giving us enough pro promotion, or you are not giving our teams, whom we are sponsoring, or players whom we are sp sponsoring, enough exposure. You are being critical of some of the teams which we are supporting, so we won't give you ads. Not to crack under that pressure is very difficult. Either you give up. or you become part of them the indian premier league or ipl is a sporting extravaganza that started with a big bang with millions of dollars at stake it continues to make very big sports news everywhere what lalit modi did and he did it successfully brilliantly he made every person who was important in india a stakeholder in his venture good luck what in effect did was that gavaskar and shastri were bought over and they started saying that ipl is the greatest thing to have happened to the world the man whose brains helped conceptualize this fantastic property he is the chairman and chief commissioner of the IPL Mr Lalit Modi similarly there were newspapers who realized or felt that since corporate world is involved and they would promote their teams here's a look at the music video shoot for the mumbai indians well, it was a different experience but uh, I enjoyed it. It was nice. This this advertising money, where will it go? It will go to print. It will go to uh, television channels. Today, the IPL is worth over 4.13 billion US dollars. IPL team owners had to recover their huge investments in order to keep their teams going. investments everyone was aware by every individual who have bought the teams are so huge that they are going to take another 5 6 years to recover that money 200000 is 350000 450000 500000 600000 720000 730000 750000 $750, is there all we read in the papers all we read on uh, saw on television channels was that how everyone is making profits which wasn't true <laughs> everyone wanted trp ratings to grow and since everyone was brought over so we were fed on these lies why blame the media for everything why 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 are we shooting the messenger for let's say the ipl uh, for the darker side of the ipl suddenly being revealed the simple reason is that we weren't told because we were all part of that gravy train negative publicity about any aspect of the ipl was not allowed slaughtering a cash cow while it's still producing milk is bad business
the IPL parties, which became such a controversial issue. The television channel or the newspaper owners, they are aware of the fact that, look, this is putting stress on cricketers. They play one day, they party till uh, morning, then they travel next day. These things were not written about. Being a cricketer is a sportsman, so when you dress up, uh, is it really a problem for you to look so suave? I don't know about looking suave, but um, it's always fun to dress up. I think it's really important that we uh, you know, always have a, have a good time. But um, yeah, the, you know, as I said, the guys are here tonight to enjoy themselves and uh, you know, looking forward to the tournament coming up. happening live it's three o'clock in the morning and still going on the media which had been going gaga over the IPL for three years suddenly did a somersault a day after the Times now exclusive report on Modi's four scams on the news hour yesterday the enforcement directorate is doing everything to drag him back to India and face the charges it's like you treat your uh, readers or your viewers uh, like a herd, you lead them in one direction till one day and suddenly when actually you are getting exposed. Who got exposed also in this? The people who had not told their viewers. I am sure every reader has a right to ask those very newspapers or those very TV channels that for three years you told us a different story. Now all of a sudden you are taking a somersault and saying everything is wrong about uh, this man or about uh, this sport. Where were you for these three years? The fact is that the entire BCCI knew what was happening. Why didn't they come out and, and speak up? Uh, why there were franchise owners who are people who have listed companies who were involved. Why didn't they come and speak out? Why is it that the media is blamed when things go wrong? The problem with sports reporting at the moment is that there is this nexus which is growing between the corporate, the marketing and because of this nexus, uh, sports reporting is well-meaning but it's coming increasingly under pressure, increasingly being threatened, increasingly being shackled. <laughs> The decade that began with the rise of the questionable media net ended with the media's role in Radia Gate. It all started in 2009 when the Income Tax Department tapped a corporate lobbyist, Neera Radia's phone. The explosive content was leaked to the media. Skeletons began to fall out of many cupboards. In May 2009, election results brought the UPA back to power. The DMK was an ally. When it was time to slice the cabinet pie, Neera Radia negotiated for DMK aspirants, including A. Raja and Karuna Nidhi's daughter, Kanimoi. Hi, Neera. Hi, did I wake you up? No, no, I've been up, yeah, most of the night. If stalemate continues, yeah. Yeah, listen, the thing hmm. is that they hmm. need to talk to him directly. That's what the problem is. Apparently now, the message from the other side is that yeah. why did he go, why did Balu go public? Apparently, PM's really pissed off that they went public. But that Balu's doing, nah? he, didn't, he was not doing. Instru instructed yeah. by Karunanidhi to do that, actually. Oh, he, he, wasn't. Every, he, was not, he was told to come away and tell Congress that. And he went and public, and this when the media media off. media was sending outside. Oh God! So now what? What should I tell them? Tell me okay. what should I tell well, them? I would like to see greater evidence of the political party having been approached, having been spoken to, having been influenced. If there is evidence of that, the journalist must be held accountable for that. Neera, hi. Now they are hmm. saying. Hmm. We'll take whoever. Whoever, I mean, it doesn't matter Maran or whoever, Balu or Raja or anything. No? Huh. Now they're saying that. But tell me one thing. Uh, but I've conveyed the... the I've had a long chat. I've had a long chat. Huh. And they've promised me that Azad will speak to her. They will speak to her? Yeah. Who? Gulam? Gulam. I don't think political reporting requires you to be a courier or a middleman between a Neera Radia and a political party.
In June 2009, the Bombay High Court passed a judgment on the gas dispute between the Ambani brothers. It directed Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Industries to honor an agreement signed with Anil Ambani's Reliance Natural Resources. The matter was soon to come up in the Supreme Court. Neera Radia was busy lobbying for client Mukesh Ambani. She called up Veer Sangvi of the Hindustan Times. They discussed Veer's weekly column, Counterpoint, and the possibility of a piece by him on the dispute. So I will link it to the election verdict. The fact okay. that there's been so much NREGA, that Sonia has committed to including everybody, that how the message for this five years of Manmohan Singh should be that you have to put an end to this kind of allocation of scarce resources on the basis of corruption and arbitrariness at the cost of the country. Otherwise, the country will not forgive you. Yeah, but we, you have to keep in mind that the fact that he's been given the gas field by the government to operate, he spent $10 billion on it. Okay. Anil Ambani is getting the benefit of without spending yeah, the so, funds so on I'll it. Points, no? yeah. So I'll make those points. Yeah. So I'll make those points. The people, by, because the system is so corrupt and open to manipulation, by manipulating the system, by not paying anybody, you can get hands on resources. Therefore, the only way Manmohan Singh hopes to survive is to get a handle on the resources and have some kind of way of allocating them that is transparent, fair and perhaps done by him. Well, there you'd be attacking Mukesh only, no? Why, why? Explain that. Um, you see, because uh, resource has been allocated to Mukesh. So what case. point do you want me to make? Namaskar. I am Prabhu Chawla. Prabhu Chawla, editor of India Today magazine, also provided Neera Radia with insider information. The judgment was coming. I wanted to forewarn him. The judgment is coming. It's arrogant. What do you do? It's arrogant. I don't know what to do. Prabhu, tell me one thing. The judgment is fixed, right? Look, in this country, both sides are fixed in the two sides. Hmm. But the way is going about the Supreme Court is not, I won't give you anything more than that. Hmm. It's not, not the right way. Hmm. No, not the right way, Matlab, you're saying that he's going to Supreme Court, he shouldn't go to Supreme Court. No, 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 the way he's going to Supreme Court. One after another, the skeletons kept tumbling out. Paid news at its sublime best, now exposed. The news media had no option but to try and come clean. Indian journalism has faced its toughest crisis. Serious allegations of wrongdoing have been leveled against marquee editors. All three journalists were given a platform to defend themselves on TV. I wish to God this would never happen. If I could do it all again, I would obviously do it very differently. I had no idea when I was talking to a source that the process of massaging a source would be secretly tape recorded. She was giving me useful information. When I look back with hindsight, with everything that one knows about her, I feel that I made an error of judgment. But I feel that that is the most that I can be accused of in this because I actually did not pass on any message. Yes, if you have an evidence, I am accountable to my viewers and readers. But if we go to the editorial role of every editor in this country, from MJ Akbar, from Mr. Ram, from Mr. V. Sangvi, from Mr. HK Dua, and whatever, you will find all of them advising role, exchanging dogs, and what not. We hope this will answer the questions you have. Based on the actions of a few, if there are a few people out of line, if there are a few people who have acted in a manner which uh, is, is, is not appropriate for a journalist, inappropriate behavior, they must be held accountable for the same. But don't damn this entire profession. Anything that might hurt the business interests of large media houses usually gets gagged before it's allowed to do any damage, like the much-awaited press council report. The two-member committee set up by the press council did submit its report. There was no formal voting, only an informal show of hands. A thin majority of the members of the press council who were present on the 26th of July decided not to disclose the full 71-page report of the subcommittee and instead that document has been placed on record as a reference document, though not on the website of the Press Council of India. And what was given was a 3,600-word report which took out largely the recommendations and the observations that had been made in the, towards the end of the 
36,000 word report. The report recommended that news should be clearly demarcated from advertisements by printing disclaimers. That it should be mandatory for all candidates or political parties to fully disclose their equity stakes and or financial interests in newspaper and or television channels. It also recommended that media organizations should refrain from the practice of engaging stringers and correspondents who double up as agents collecting advertisements. The report was scuttled by a handful of proprietors. The report was not scuttled by journalists. The Press Council of India's limitations have been exposed. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Information Technology has invited comments from stakeholders, professionals, experts, organizations, associations and from the public in general on various aspects relating to paid news. Is this yet another effort designed to die a dusty death like the Press Council report did? We don't know yet. Evidently, the debate on paid news has died down. But does that mean that the menace of paid news has ceased to exist? The Election Commission of India is now gearing up to deal with paid news. Recently, we had a case uh, from UP where a candidate was found exceeding the expenditure and not submitting the, the account as prescribed uh, by the Election Commission, and also where it was proven that uh, she had indulged in paid news. She was disqualified, and we feel that this should be a deterrent to future defaulters. We have recommended to the government that paid news should be declared a, a, an electoral offence and a criminal offence, which should carry a, a punishment of at least uh, two years of uh, imprisonment. Meanwhile, Prabhu Chawla left India today and moved on from conducting Sidhi Bath on Aaj Tak TV channel to Sachi Bath on Inadu TV. He now conducts Tikhi Bath on IBN 7. Veer Sangvi has a new designation befitting his stature. He is now advisor, Hindustan Times Media. And of course, the buck continues to stop with Barkhadat on NDTV. Good evening and welcome to the buck stops here. I'm Barkhadat. It seems that paid news is no longer a cancer in the system. It has taken over the whole system. The media is expected to carry news on social and political malpractice. In order to play this role of watchdog and carry out its duties as the fourth pillar of democracy, isn't it crucial that it first puts its own house in order? Now, that's one question that will never make it to the headlines.